night may be long and the dark may be deep, but the answers are there to be found. Whether it's the normal, the abnormal, or the paranormal, you're in the right place. Let's go beyond reality. It's Wednesday on the West, Thursday on the East. Many are stuck somewhere in between. Welcome to Beyond Reality Radio with me, Jason Hawes, and the always awesome JV Johnson, I think, or frozen to death. I, JV yeah, Johnson. I think what you meant to say is it's uh, whatever you said Wednesday in, in the West, and and it's uh, Thursday on Pluto because that's where I think I am right now on Pluto that has like no atmosphere, so no heat because it is absolutely unbelievably unbearably frigid here. Well, and you you're what minus eight. Well, I was minus 10 the last I looked. It's supposed to get down to like minus 15, and then, you know, the wind chill adds to that. And it's just all the way around, it's absolutely miserable. And for those of you out there who are dealing with this polar vortex, my gosh. Well, we're dealing with it too, but it's, I think we're at like four degrees right now, which is like summertime compared to you, you Jim, or summertime <laughs> compared to some of these places out there. You're looking at International Falls, Jim. They set a record back in 1996 for minus 35. They're expecting minus 40 tonight. Um, Fargo, which I've been to a couple different times, uh, their record was 1887, minus 34. They're looking at minus 29. Minneapolis, 1887, record was at minus 27. They're expecting it to hit minus 28 tonight. And this list goes on and on. Milwaukee, 1899, minus 15. They're expecting minus 20. So what you're saying is record-breaking cold. Uh, this is, this is just brutal, brutal cold. Peoria, Illinois, minus 13 back in 1996 and minus 19 expected tonight. My gosh, well, what is going on? I, we mentioned it the other night when we started talking about this, you know, this is dangerously cold. This is the type of cold that you can get frostbite almost instantly and, uh, you won't even know you have it. That's the problem with frostbite. You get it and you don't even realize it until it's too late. And then you've got pieces of your face falling off. Well, and I was a kid in upstate New York, Canandaigua, and man, it used to get so cold. And I, I remember to the point where we wouldn't be able to move our hands because our gloves would be wet and frozen and we'd have to go in the house and my mother would have a warm bowl of water and you'd put your hands in and you'd just rest them there. But you and I have been out in minus 15, minus 20, but the difference is... That's a dry cold when we've been up in the mountains in New Hampshire, snowmobiling, where this is just a wet cold, and that you just can't get away from. I mean, we, we'd run outside minus 15 and nothing but a thermal shirt on to get stuff out of the truck and everything else, and it wouldn't bother us much. But the minute it's a wet cold, it's a total different cold that you, you just, no matter what. Yeah, well, I tell you, once you get down below minus 10 and, and further, it's cold as cold as cold, and, and especially when that wind starts blowing because, um, you know, the wind chills, uh, they don't show up on the thermometer, but they show up on your skin, and uh, that's the dangerous part. So stay warm, stay indoors. If You know, check on uh, elderly relatives and neighbors and friends to make sure people are okay. This is the type of weather that even if your house is heated, you're going to have pipes freeze if they're close to an exterior yeah. wall, that kind of thing. Um, you know, just be aware of all all that take care of yourselves take care of your friends and family and your neighbors and uh, you know in a couple of days hopefully this will be over oh gosh let's hope because they're calling for 55 degrees on monday of next week <laughs> it's just crazy uh, yeah how, how can you even do that <laughs> that's crazy but, um you know what might help though what a little bit of magic well, maybe a little bit of witchcraft going on. Yeah, there. we've got uh, Carissa Renteria joining us. She's a practicing witch. She'll be on in just a little bit. Uh, she's going to talk about her higher perspective on magic. And I was watching a bunch of the videos on her website. She's a really fascinating personality. Um, and she does so many uh, interesting things. And I can't wait to get into these conversations with her because her story is very unique. Her outlook on life is even more unique. And I'm excited to have this conversation with Carissa tonight. Yeah, I think this is going to be great. And then tomorrow we've got Lisa Campion on. A psychic and energy healer, and we're going to be talking about energy vampires, which is a term, of course, we've heard a lot about these days. Um, and we all tend to know some somebody out there who tends to just suck the life force right out of it, and some of us. Um, and it can be tricky also when you're dealing with certain people who are like that, but they're your family members or your bosses and and thing and people like that. So, uh, but but no fear there. She's got some f uh, foolproof ways to create strong boundaries and. Uh, and also just how to learn how to spot energy vampires and how to keep yourself from getting drained. So make sure you tune in. It's going to be a great show. Yeah, and Friday night, of course, is a best of program. Now, Monday's show, I'm a little confused by this. Uh, I don't know if you if you read the description for Monday night's show. Our guest is going to be Tim Schwartz. He's an author. 
like and your shorts is as big as my shorts. <laughs> right, yogurt let the shorts, you well. Let the shorts be yes. with you. May the shorts be with you. Um, I'm not really even sure what we're talking about. You see, we're talking about ghosts, poltergeist elementals, Geff, the talking mongoose, which has research, baffled researchers for years. Um, and James Irving and his family found themselves in the crosshairs of a series of increasingly strange events that would dominate their lives for years to come. I'm not sure. I'm not really exactly sure, but it, it sounds like, like all a, things thrown in. Yeah, it's like everything. It's like it's like the the mud pie of uh, paranormal discussions on Monday night. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be interesting. And then Tuesday we've got John Potash on, author, and uh, we'll be discussing his newly released film, Drugs as Weapons Against Us, the CIA War on Musicians and Activists, based on the book, Drugs as Weapons Against Us. So make sure you t- tune in. Yeah, this we, talk, we talked We talked with John, I don't remember when it was. About a year ago. Year about a year, ago. and that was when the book was released, and now it's they've made it into a documentary. So um, we're going to follow up with him on that. Yeah, so make sure you tune in. If you haven't yet, head over to facebook.com slash beyondrealityradio. Like that Facebook page for us. Then head to beyondrealityradio.com. We can find all the stations we are on across the country, and the list is constantly being updated with new stations being added all the time. So check it often. You can also download the smartphone apps, which allow you to listen live, catch past shows, join the online chat, and more. Or any night we're live, feel free to just listen right from the website. Going to the website, upper right-hand corner, you have a listen live tab or a listen live and chat tab. You can listen live while hanging on a chat room with other self-minded individuals, or you can listen just from from the website while doing other things. So make sure you check that out. I you, have. I'm sorry. I, you know, if I you download were, the show from iTunes or anywhere else, just rate it for us. It helps us big time. Yeah, it, it really does. And I did want to mention before I forget, and that's why I, I jumped in the middle of your thing there. Um, it's the shark's birthday today. Uh, Bruce Markison, the shark, who fills in for us when we're not able to do the show. Is he 24 now? Um, I think he's 18, or at least he said he was 18. (laughs) But I saw him drinking a beer in a bar the other night, so he must, he's got to be older than that. I'm not sure. But happy birthday, Bruce, and thanks for the great work you do when we're not around. Appreciate it. On another another note, some great news. And you and I were talking about this last night during break. Um, Scientists are claiming we will have a cure for cancer within a year. Now, you mentioned this during a break last night, and I got very excited about it. And I was actually uh, talking with my sister. As, as most people know, we lost our father to cancer a few years ago. And I brought this up as a real bit of hopeful news. I'm just hoping that this isn't one of those false alarms giving us false hope. Because this we've is, heard kind of some of these things in the past. Well, and this has been showing up everywhere in, in news, news like feeds to, and everything I like else. to hear but, that. And a team of Israeli scientists claim they will likely develop a cure for cancer within the next year, the the Jerusalem Post reported on Monday. The new treatment is being developed by Accelerated Evolution Biotechnologies under the leadership of CEO Dr. Uh, Ian Morad, uh, according to the report. We believe it will offer in a year's time a complete cure for cancer, said Dan Oradar, chairman of the company's board. Our cancer cure will be effective from day one, will last a duration of a few weeks, and will have no or minimal side effects wow. at a much lower cost than most other treatments on the market. The treatment called Mutatu will use a combination of cancer-targeting uh, peptides and toxins that will specifically kill cancer cells. The treatment will eventually be personalized and, more, and a more specific cocktail of the drug will be given to patients based on their type of cancer uh, so told if, the newspaper. If, if I'm understanding you correctly, this isn't a genetic approach to curing cancer, which is where I think most people have had their eyes set, thinking that the genetic approach to these cures was going to be the one that was going to reach us first. This is something a little bit different. This sounds almost more like chemotherapy, but a very targeted version of it. Yeah, and it, it would be so amazing if this well, happens. So, well, think, I, I just I, uh, breast cancer and, and all these other, uh, you know, colon well, cancer and all these types of cancer that are out there. There's a lot of them and the list is long and a lot of people die. I mean, this is unbelievable. If this 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 actually happens and we actually see this treatment and it actually works, um, it's a it's a game changer for a lot of people. Well, especially with, of course, when it comes to the U.S., we've got a lot of different regulations and even a cure for something tends to take an excessively long time before it runs through the channels here. And I think you'd agree with that, JV. Well, FDA approval takes a while. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, but um, didn't Trump uh, sign a bill that was uh, called uh, uh, Last Hope 
uh, I'm not believe, sure what I it was called, yeah. but it was it was something that if you have no other treatment options, you're allowed early access to treatments that are still experimental and not approved by the FDA. Well, and I would think on a situation like this, I mean, if you're really sick, you possibly head over there and get. Well, and, that's and what that this. that's what that bill is. Yeah. I think that's what it does for so you. So I think this is amazing. This really is. And if this is true, and if, if they're really that close. It's gonna it's gonna help so many people. Yeah, of course we we've lost a lot of people due to this, and sometimes it's just a little too late. But think of all the people that will be saved. Uh, come, well, come, you I, know, I, I have to the, say again, I don't like to bring my personal experiences in the, into this much, but I watched my both of my grandfathers die, both from lung cancer. Both were asbestos related lung cancer. I watched my father die from lung cancer. Yep. All I can say is. Yes, it's too late for those folks in my, that were in my life. But, man, if this can spare another family going through the agony and pain of that illness, then, you know, thank God. Well, and me, I, my father had MS and cancer. And, uh, of, of course, MS is its, its own nasty thing. But, I mean, yeah, it just just think of the uh, the miracles that could come out of this. It would be amazing. So, fingers crossed. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens with this. It's 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 very promising. Yes. So again, we have a great show tonight. We're going to be talking with Carissa Rentera, a practicing witch, uh, and uh, we're going to be talking about a bunch of different things. So make sure you tune in. The phone number is 844-687-7669. Again, toll free at 844-687-7669. We'll be opening up the phones in the second hour. We're going to take a quick break. A lot more to come. You listen to Jason and JV, Beyond Reality Radio. We'll be back after this. Did you know that online retailers like Amazon have constant deals that can save you money? on the things you buy every day? It's no joke. Save 40%, 50%, even 80% on great products. And all you have to do is know about them. Noodle Shark is the way to be alerted when something good is coming your way. Noodle Shark is the social media page that lists great deals that not only save you money, but give you the deals before anyone else has them. All you have to do is find Noodle Shark on Facebook. Search it as The Noodle Shark. That's The Noodle Shark. Because you deserve to save too. Become a shark and save. You know, it's always baffled me. You know how the, the numeric keypads on a computer keyboard off to the right side generally on the keyboard you know what i'm talking about yeah. right yeah um why that the re- numbers are reversed from a phone keypad to make life a little more difficult because when you use one and then you go to the other i'm always i'm always typing the wrong numbers which creates errors and that's not a good thing welcome back to the program everyone it's beyond reality radio with jason and jv Our guest tonight is Carissa Renteria. Carissa is a practicing witch, and we're going to be talking about magic. Magic with a K. Carissa, welcome to Beyond Reality Radio. It's great to have you with us tonight. Hello. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, thanks for coming on. So let's first of all figure out what we're talking about here when we talk about magic. Uh, Many of us spell it with just a C. When you add a K, does it mean something different? Yes. Um, well, I'm not doing a, you know magic tricks on a stage, so it's just and I and I like the way it it looks with a K versus a C, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it's you know just personal preference, but that's the, the difference, really. Is it more arcane? I mean, does it have a connection to something more arcane when you when you're using the K? I know this is a a minor point, but I'm curious. Right. Eh, you know, it, honestly, with with me, I, it. I personally, like, I understand the difference, and I know why a lot of people use it, but for me, I just like the way it looks. It just, you know, has more personality with a K. How did you first get introduced to all this? Well, I've been working on myself with, you know, using different healing modalities for close to a decade, and some were really good and some not so good, and, you know, a lot of the healers are not really healers. Uh, that's another topic. Um, and then I was introduced to this shaman who is also a witch earlier um, in two th- early 2018. And um, she introduced me to magic. And I thought, well, I, you know, I never really thought about practicing magic prior to meeting her. And I thought, okay, well, I'm going to try this. You know, I wasn't afraid of it. And I didn't, you know, um, think that I couldn't do it. And I mean, she just gave me a little bit. And with the little that she, the information that she gave me, I kind of just started researching on my own. And I kind of developed my own um, way, method of, of practicing. So that's pretty much how I was introduced to it. And it's, it's so interesting because 
you know, I'm not a witch who's been doing it for 30 or 20 years, you know, like most people are like, I've been a Wiccan or something, and I've been initiated in all of these groups, and I have all of these certificates, and I don't think that's necessary. I think either you have it or you don't, and I honestly believe that all of us have it, but it's about learning how to get out of our own way and tapping into that inner fire that really allows us to to um, to turn on the, the the light to that inner witch, if that makes any sense. Well, it makes a lot of sense. And I also like the fact of, like what you said, there's a lot of healers out there that aren't really healers. And we've covered that many times in oh, the show good. where, where they <laughs> because we, we're, because we're firm believers that there are people out there who do have gifts, but there's many people out there who either believe they have gifts and really don't, mm-hmm. or just you know, are trying to sell somebody something that, uh, just you. just to benefit themselves and we and we've dealt with that and we've seen that a lot whether it's healers whether it's self-proclaimed sensitives and psychics and and things of that nature so you you always got you always got to find somebody who's yes. well trustworthy and somebody who well you that you can ask about and actually get good references on well you know i'm so glad that you're talking about that and actually i was gonna i have my own youtube show cosmic optimism and, and when i started it i was gonna label it i was gonna I wanted to call myself the spiritual whistleblower. <laughs> I thought it sounds too conspiracy, so I'm not going to do that. But but no, it's so important. I, I you know, I I am I cannot stay quiet because this is so so important to me. I can't stay quiet when I cross paths with with the straight up charlatan and I'm just like, "No, I have to tell people that you are not a real healer." And you know, there are some people that have never even taken a, a, a Reiki course, and they want to charge $250 for healings, and that's, like, really bad. And then you have those that, you know, only want to take a three-day uh, healer course, and all of a sudden they are this super-duper shaman, and they can do more harm, you know, when they, they work with energy than good. So that's another topic I think that most people are unaware of, and it's so important because this shaman that I'm actually working with, she's, you know, she, she's very humble, and she doesn't like to be out in the limelight, and she actually works on a lot of people who have gone to um, so many of these so-called healers, and they get totally messed up. Chris, I've got to ask you this because I noticed on your website that you list yourself as being from New York and L.A. Which part of the country are you in right now? Because if you're in New York, you're, you're dealing with this cold like we are. Yeah, I'm also an actress, so I'm bi-coastal, but I'm in L.A. right now. And I want to mention really quick that I'm starting up my own online business, um, and it doesn't even have a witchy name. It's <laughs> Cleopatra's Temple of Love, and I will have a bunch of um, uncrossing baths and packages so people can do magic in the privacy of their own home. Oh, okay, nice. Okay, so... um when we talk about um, witches and warlocks and, you know, that right. kind of thing, there's a bit of a misconception still. I think it persists. Uh, it's held over from, you know, from the Middle Ages, I guess I would say. Uh, yes. Talk talk to us a little bit about that. Well, you know, I think because we've all, honestly, I believe that all of us have ancestors who who are pagans and, you know, I'm assuming that most people, you know, have their little ancestral table, whether they're a, you know, an altar, whether they're a witch or not. And so I think that throughout the years, probably several hundreds of lifetimes, um, we have been witches in in warlocks in in previous lives. And so, you know, many of us have been, um, and I don't even know if I have um, been burned at the stake. Maybe not because I, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have any fear when I was introduced to magic, but I think a lot of people who have been uh, burned at the stake in previous lifetimes, they carry that over, and so they probably haven't, you know, healed that trauma from those lifetimes, and so that that's why we, we see a lot of people who have just shunned away from anything having to do with magic. And then not only that, but, you know, uh, you know, the... the, the, the I say fallen beings, but, you know, because they're, I say they're more in control than the actual people in physical bodies um, that have just totally demonized um, magic and witches and warlocks because, in reality, that is a, a pretty powerful weapon against the power elite. Well, and, and 
one one thing one thing we've talked about many times again on this show is the fact that well paganism is pretty much the oldest religion out there it's uh, any right. t- anytime people are dancing around a fire for a good kill i mean that's that's a style of, of paganism so we're all pretty much descendants of uh, somewhere in our family tree of absolutely paganism Abs- absolutely and um i have a you know an altar for my ancestors and i Every, every before every single ritual, I light a candle and incense, and I say a prayer, and I call in my helping ancestral spirits because I don't want the ancestors who are not, uh, you know, happy, <laughs> the ones that haven't been healed yet, to come in. So I call. I always call in my helping ancestral spirits before every single ritual, and I ask them to assist me with whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, but yeah, it, we, we everyone has ancestors who are pagans. There's no doubt about that. We also are wrestling with the words themselves. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm a little bit confused by this. Um, I think that when, uh, you know, witch and witchcraft, and those words were initially introduced to um, Western civilization, we'll say, they were kind of done so in the context right. of the church. And the church right. defined them as being something that was, you know... Uh, satanic. Uh, yeah, satanic, exactly. Um, has that definition evolved, or is the is my understanding of the origin of the word not, not accurate? Ah. Uh. I think it's evolved in the sense where, I mean, if you've noticed, witches are kind of popular right now. You know, everyone... Oh, abs- wants, yeah, absolutely yeah, is, yeah. Everyone wants to be a witch, and, you know, they've... Yeah. So, I mean, I think that... I think it's evolved in that sense. Um, but as far as religion goes, yeah, every, everything that has to do with, you know... Uh, Stepping into our power is going to be demonized in one way or another by, you know, religions. Now, I'm not saying all religions are are bad and all religious people are evil, because I I do know some people who are very religious, and they they practice magic, and they're incredible at it, you know, like um, hoodoo, you know, people who who practice hoodoo. And I, I, um, um, I use a lot of... um, I follow a lot of the hoodoo tradition in some of my my rituals, so I kind of blend between Egyptian magic and 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 hoodoo. So um, I also you know. I also think that um, you know I, I'm not a particularly religious individual, but I you know I have my beliefs and right. and they line up with um, you know with, with what most people would consider um, Christianity. However, I think that what part of our problem is, is we fall into this belief that uh, those who preach to us are infallible, and they're not infallible. They're, inter- they're making their own interpretation of Absolutely. whatever it happens to be, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the, the, the exact, you know, it doesn't have to be the right interpretation. They could be wrong, too. So Absolutely. Every, I mean, this is why we have to sharpen our Christ discernment. Now, when I say Christ, I don't, I'm not referring to any religion. Everyone has that inner Christ Self, right? So it's about sharpening our Christ discernment. The thing is, we, they have put these people on pedestals because they do not want us to step into our power. Because when, when there's a, the critical, when there's a critical mass of the population steps in, finally steps into their power, I don't think we have that yet, or we would not be seeing all of this chaotic mess in the world. We will begin to see all of the uh, corruption and uh, evil, quote-unquote, begin to dissipate. But until then, it's about humanity learning how to take full responsibility for their lives, if that makes any sense. Yeah, so right now you think it's more about them them using it to control us. Yes, but I think because we have allowed it. I, I will never, I, I don't want to, bl- like, I, I understand it from a human perspective, right? And we can say that the power elite, and we can say that uh, the reptilians, or what, whoever you want to blame. But it is not a particular entity, entity that we are battling. It is a state of consciousness that is being heavily manipulated by the dark forces. And when we can see that from a higher perspective, then it's easier for us as individuals, to get out of our own way so that we can begin to make real changes, right? And when I say taking full responsibility for our lives, I don't mean going out and getting a job. No, it goes much deeper than that. We really have to learn how to peel the onion. But more importantly, we have to, we have to find that courage 
to begin to do that because it, it takes a lot of courage to want to change. Most people don't like change in this in this world. Yeah, you brought up the the state of the world a couple of times in your answers to the questions here. Um, right, and uh, you know we do know that, uh, and I don't think we're we're alone in in this particular year or day and age where there's trouble in the world. That seems to follow humanity. However, Absolutely. however, uh, let's talk about magic a little bit. First of okay. all, let's because um, I want to know how magic can help solve some of these problems. But first, I want to ask you what kind of magic are we talking about where is this energy coming from the magic that for instance when i do a ritual yeah okay so when i do you know it's so interesting and i'm going to upload some really crazy um workings that i i get quite often i have very obvious demonic faces in the candle wax um and i you know i wasn't anticipating to see this but to answer your question, where does that come from? It comes from definitely within, right? It's it's our light. It's it's how much work have we done on ourselves? This is why I think that uh, magic is a healing modality. So a, a, a witch is only as good as the work that they have put into themselves, right? So the more work we do put into ourselves, the more I believe fire we have. Um, in when we are executing spells. Now, I don't think it just comes from within. I also know that I don't work alone. So I mentioned earlier that I call in my helping ancestral spirits, but I also work with um, some of the Egyptian gods and some of the and other goddesses. And um, I think that they also help us, you know, depending on what kind of work you're doing. For instance, my specialty is reversing and uncrossing rituals. So I, I know I don't work alone, and those demonic faces, that very, very distinct, by the way, demonic faces that came out in the candle wax, and I'm not doing anything special. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm executing with my own, with whatever it is that, you know, my, 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 my inner power. Um, but it's all, it's from within, and your spirit guides, your helping ancestral spirits, and the gods and the goddesses that you work with. That's my opinion. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, when I mean, obviously, at one point right. this became of interest to you, and then it, and then there's a learning curve, and then at some point you're actually yeah. using these energies and this magic to affect change. Yeah, it's so interesting. I mean, barely in 2018, it's so crazy, right? And I, uh, but really, like right away, I started getting these distinct, this distinct demonic faces, and I thought, oh my god! Like the first time I saw it, I said, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> But but it's so you know it, it's 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 crazy. But then I started putting two and two together, and I said, well, okay. So I am very aware of the fact that there are demonic beings everywhere. They're like cockroaches, um, and so they're all around us, right? So this is why it's important. Spiritual hygiene is so so important. Um, but I also am aware of the fact that there are. Um, good and bad demons, by the way, um, in, in several of the other realms. So I thought, well, what am I doing? Am I capturing these demonic beings in, in the wax? And that's pretty much what I've you know, concluded, that that's what I'm doing. Um, so I, as a result, I devised a spell, you know, because I've been making, creating my own spells as well, um, to kind of authorize the gods, right, and my ancestral spirits, to um, clear more of, of whatever gunk is in the astral realm, the lower levels of the astral realm, because we have the authority and they have the power, but we have to authorize that petition into action. So this is, this is kind of what I've been working on, and, and I know it's just like, wow, just I learned it in 2018. But it's interesting because obviously I was a witch, as many of us were warlocks and witches in previous lives. So I think I've tapped into um, past life memories, perhaps, because I feel like things just came to me. Or either that or my helping ancestral spirits and the gods were, were giving me, you know, uh, you know, um, messages on how to to execute all of this and do this, and it's just it's so empowering. That's all I, I that's all I know is it's just so empowering and it's so much fun. And um, yeah, so it's always definitely there's always learning. Um, I'm always learning. I'm learning every single day um, when I do a ritual, and even in, when I'm not doing rituals, I'm always you know um, I I want to learn from other 
very experienced practitioners because I feel that's the best, you know, those are the best teachers. Well, let me ask this, though. When you refer to them as demonic, is that the way you usually refer to them or do you refer to them as negative type entities? And the only reason I'm asking is because demonic tends to be more of a Christian type term for, right. for something well, of no, that nature. You know, demonic beings, I guess I got that term from um, the shaman that I work with because she has a very, very, very profound gift and she can travel um, with ease between realms and she's and she's incredible. I'll give you her information later. But um, demonic, um, it could be negative beings or demonic. I, I prefer saying demonic beings. Um, I'm not referring to Christianity, but they're all demonic beings, and I wrote a post on this on Facebook recently. All demonic beings are definitely evil, but there are demons. Not all demons are evil. There are some good demons, but some of the good demons have been demonized by Christianity. So, well, that um, right down to Satan. I mean, Satan was uh, all of a sudden became a negative type thing right, due to right. Christianity. So, right. So anything with the word demon is like, oh my God, you know, they even think that the Egyptian gods are are uh, demons. And I'm like, are you kidding? They're like so wise. And it's, they're amazing. I, I love my girls. I call them my girls. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I've got to ask you to roll your R's for me. Say your name and roll your R. Oh, Carissa <laughs> that's awesome i can't do that we're, we're we're saying your name uh before the show and i was like i i can't do it jv i don't know I, yeah. <laughs> because we saw you say it well, I, I just can't this, everybody loves that on my videos that, and it's just become you know it's like my signature right right now it, it is awesome all right we only have a couple minutes in this segment before we have to go to our top of the hour break and i wanted to take us back to something you were talking about in the very beginning beginning of our discussion and that is what we would call charlatans or other people that are kind of consider them or portray themselves yeah. as being mystical or healers or whatever it happens to be. And they prey on people that are looking for answers or looking for healing in many cases, um, yeah. which is, the, I feel, the, like the worst kind of charlatan. But I do want to ask you about something when it comes to like psychics and people um, uh, kind of in that discipline. Um, I have a friend who went to a psychic that I thought was clearly a, a fraud. Um, mm -hmm. he paid his hundred bucks, whatever it was, had a session with the psychic over, over his losing his mother came out and felt as though, you know, he had been, um, somehow, uh, his, his grief had been, um, assuaged or helped by that session. And I said, and I didn't want to argue with him and I just said to him, Hey, if you came out of there and you feel a lot better about, you know, you losing your mom and all that, then I guess it's a hundred dollars well spent. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think, yes, I think that's, that's good, because in many ways, psychics are like therapists, even if they're not so good, because most people are going to a psychic because they want to hear what they want to hear. Um, so I, I think that's okay. It wasn't an actual, you know, a shamanic session where they were going to extract entities and exchange energy. So I think that's okay. I think in that sense, it's perfectly fine. However, um, you know, I, you know, if it, that's going to help the grieving process. However, if you go to a psychic and it's something more extreme, like, you know, someone's going to die, then that's obviously more, um, uh, you know, harmful. But I totally agree with, um, this person. I think if they've, they, if they've helped, that's okay. And if you felt the person was, was a fraud, hopefully this person, your friend, or will not go back to this person to ask about serious, you know, <laughs> not, yeah, not, that the, I, not that the death wasn't serious, right, but no, you, know, you know what I mean. <laughs> that's a good point. You don't want them saying, hey, you know, um, quit your job, move to do this, do that. Well, you know, some yeah. very serious life decisions based on someone who you don't think is, is legitimate. It, but Exactly. Yeah. But feeling good every, when you lose someone, because I've, you know, I've I recently lost my 22-year-old cat. I know how that feels. You want to feel good. Old, so wow. even if you, you know, talk to someone on the street and they tell you what you want to hear, even if it's not true, it's it's perfectly fine. I am okay with that. Okay, well, so, so it's their it's their perception of how they how they take it, whether the person's good at what they do or not. Bottom line, right? It, it, well, yeah, absolutely. Because remember, people are going to believe what they want to believe, no matter what, yeah. no matter what you tell them. We have to go to break here in just a few seconds, but before we do that. Um you do a lot of different things. You're an actress, among other things. You've got the, the videos. Uh, give out your website and any other place that you'd like folks to go to check out your work. Okay. So you can go to www.carissarenteria, and that is Carissa with two R's and two S's, dot com. Um, the Cleopatra's Temple of Love, I already bought the domain. I don't have anything up yet. I'm in, you know, hopefully having have it up by the end of February, but you can just go to Carissa Renderia, uh, dot com, and I have everything on there um, for now. That is kind of my hot spot, 
or you can go to um, my Instagram page. I actually have shared a ton of excerpts by some of uh, some incredible authors and some of the healers I've worked with in just my own blurbs, and I've created the memes um, with Pixabay pictures. You know, it's free of copyrights, and I add a title. So you can go to my Instagram, which is Cosmic Optimism, and you can follow me there. I'll follow you back. Great. And All right. That's so. It. Still cold. I'm just just a weather update over <laughs> just here. Just a little colder. <laughs> Still, it might be 12 below now. I'm not perfectly sure, but I know it's very, very cold. Well, it's not so cold that your equipment doesn't work. That's no, that's good. Part. No, and in the studio, it's well, actually... when I'm referring to equipment, it's the digital computer type equipment. <laughs> I'm not referring to any other equipment of JVs. I don't care if it works or not. <laughs> okay, well, that's the way I took it. So we're on the same page. <laughs> so I just needed to get that out there. I'm glad you clarified it. Um, yeah, it's warmed up to 62 here in the studio, so we're on our way. We're on our way. I got all the heaters cranked, and we're going to get there. Um, we've got a great show underway. We're talking with Carissa Renteria. Carissa is a practicing witch, among many other things. And I'm, I'm curious to kind of talk about other parts of her life, too. But, Chris, again, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here tonight with us. Hello. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, before we get back into the magic and, yes. and, and, uh, you know, the, the witch discussion, uh, tell us right. a little bit about your acting career. Oh, okay. So I've been, you know, it's so interesting. I feel like I've done all the work on myself first, instead of kind of going out into like, you know, really full, full force into the acting, even though I've, gone out on several, several auditions, different auditions, and I've even, I've been called in like maybe 10 times to a couple of casting offices, but nothing yet. Um, but anyway, so I, I have a lot of training, if you can see on my resume on my um, website. I don't know if that means anything, because I feel like the best training for me has been actually working on myself, you know, my psychological um, um, imbalances that everyone has, right? So I feel that that was the best uh, training for me. But I haven't really done anything um, spectacular. So, you know, I can't say that I'm a series regular or I'm a, <laughs> you know, I have an upcoming movie or a commercial. Um, but I, you know, just like all the other actors who are working it, and there is no overnight success in this field. And don't let anyone fool you because it doesn't happen that way. So it's just a matter of really... Um, of putting yourself out there, but also working on your craft and yourself um, on a daily basis. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. Does, um, so I have to, I have to ask you though, because um, you know we are talking about magic. We're talking about right. um, you know that energy, incantations, and spells, if you will. Uh, yep. Has any of that helped you with your acting career? Well, I since I just started, the first thing I wanted to get into was uncrossing because all of us are crossed up at some time in our lives, whether it's through our negative thoughts or other people uh, sending black magic, which is a, a kind of a popular thing right now because people, you know, the people who are jealous and they want to send you black magic, so you have to kind of put up your own shield. So I, I, I'm only good at right now um, reversing and uncrossing. I'm just starting to get into money magic and doing all the road opening and the money magic. Um, so I've spent quite a lot of time doing reversals, which I think is so important um, because, you know, you, you want to send back what people send you <laughs> right. <laughs> to teach them a lesson. <laughs> but I haven't really done that yet. So that's the next, I'll uh, probably start getting into that in mid-February. Um, I'm already um, working on some different concoctions that I've put together um, for Money Magic, and, and I'm definitely going to um, apply them to the acting world and the hosting world, because I actually want to do um, hosting on TV as well. I mean, you know, I have, I have a lot of different things um, that have come up since I've moved to L.A., different interests, and I've taken hosting classes and whatnot. So, um, you know, I just, I, I, I have a lot of different interests in that, in the entertainment industry. So, yeah. To answer your question, a big yes. Let's, I will be. I will be doing that. Let's um, let's so. talk about the genesis genesis of a lot of this. And I don't know how much. I mean, I watched a lot of your videos, so I know what you've been you've gone through, what you've done, how you've transformed yourself. Yes. So I'm not sure. I don't want to say too much if you don't want to talk about it here on a radio show. But I guess that's up to you. But tell us <laughs> what ha what you decided to do in 2011 and, and the transformation that you underwent. Uh, is this the Oh, oh, is this the one where I decided? Oh, yeah, 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 where I decided that I was going to be. You can say, say it. The word. You can say it. Yeah. 
celibate? Yes, that's fine. It's oh, fine. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I was the wrong thing. So anyway, okay. I just so didn't I, know if you wanted to talk about it. That's no, why I that's didn't okay. say it. Okay. It's perfect. I mean, it's on my website, right? I chose a path of celibacy. Right. And the thing is, it's so interesting because people are so surprised and they're like, well, why? Um, I just, you know, it's just one of those things that the, in it, a lot of the people who are have truly anchored themselves on the spiritual path will, will, can relate to this. You get to a point where you just want to peel the onion and you want to just kind of refine your picker. And that's kind of what I decided to do because um, I, 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 just, I, I, I just wanted to look within. And it's interesting because since I've been refining my picker, and and doing all of the work. By the way, I'm still celibate. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I should congratulate I you or say sorry. I, I mean, so I'm, I'm going to sit here quietly. No, on that but one. you know, it's so interesting because people are like, "How can you go so long?" But what they don't understand is that this is this is part of my journey. I don't know if you guys are familiar with astrology. I have my my North Node in Scorpio, and it's all about transformation in this lifetime for me. So that's why I said I think I had to go through this period of kind of just really gutting it out and peeling the onion before getting into any uh, big-time acting stuff and, and commercial stuff or hosting stuff. And also, I didn't want to be distracted with a man. Now, I'm not saying that couples cannot go through this intense transformative period um, you know, when they're together. I just didn't have a significant other at the time that I actually thought was, you know, worth keeping. So I said, well, I'm just going to choose to to focus on myself and work on myself. And I'm so glad that I did. And, you know, I had my cat that I just mentioned. She, she passed away at 22 years uh, in 2000, last year. Um, and she was kind of like my partner, you know, for this entire time. And, um, it's so, it feels so, uh, I, I just, there's a freedom I feel that I have that most people, most women don't feel because I feel like a lot of women that I meet and a lot of my friends, they can't be single. And it is so important to, to be, you have to be you have to enjoy your own company, right, before you can actually appreciate someone else in your life. And so I am not in a hurry to get into a relationship, but I'm definitely open to it now than I was, you know, say maybe six months ago or a year ago. But um, I'm not out there at bars or on the street looking for anyone. I, I would prefer to to meet up with someone who is a most compatible soulmate versus a just a soulmate. So... I'm still refining my picker because I think that's important for all of us to do, right? That never ends, um, as, you know, when you're in a physical body. But I, I just, it's just one of those things that you, you just have to do when you really want to do the hard work that is required on this path. And it's not an easy thing to do because you have to be very honest with yourself but it, it has been very rewarding in many ways um, because there is a, an independence and a freedom that I feel I have that most other women do not have. And so that has allowed me to, to step into my power and, and kind of just become the blossom into the woman that I am today. Well, and it's also about very much empowering yourself. And the fact yes. of the matter is, I have three daughters, and we've all and three sons, and we've always raised our daughters to understand that they don't need a man in their life. They don't need a exactly. significant other in their life. That they're they're powerful enough to to accomplish whatever they want to accomplish. And we've always tried to tried to raise our girls that way. Just because there's we want them we want them to be 100% independent and just know that they're strong enough inside they don't need anybody else there. If they want somebody great, we totally get that, but they don't need somebody. And I, so I think that that is also, in reference to what you're saying, it's a very empowering thing for for a woman. Absolutely. And I'm so glad that you are, you know, teaching that with your girls because it is so empowering. And speaking of empowering, that's what I have felt with the magic. It is so empowering. You know, I feel like I have, once I felt like I had... Um, uh, hooks on my back. It was like a psychic attack. And I said, okay, I'm just going to 
execute some some spells that I have here. And if it doesn't work, then I'm going to call the shaman. But I said, you know what, I'm going to do it. And I would say 15 minutes, because I like to chant my spells for up to an hour. 15 minutes into the ritual, I felt, now I don't know who did this. I don't know if it was just my own power that I was executing or if it was my gods or my ancestral spirits. I felt those hooks literally just pull, like just lift from my back. It was a sense of, of freedom, and I thought, oh, my God. And that was one of the moments, the, 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 the wonderful moments that I've had doing rituals where I felt so empowered. And I thought, holy crap, I know I'm not the only one that can do this, but if I'm doing this, that means all of us can do this. And so that was very empowering, and, and maybe it had a lot to do with the fact that I am celibate, too, so I don't know. <laughs> what, what, what did you see going on in your life at the time that made you to decide to take these steps and make these changes and welcome these other things into your life? Well, I, well there's always a story, right, that's not the happiest of stories. And um, I had, was going through this major dental surgery because um, a surgeon in um, New York, when I was living in New York, botched a surgery and so I had to pretty much um, work with, you know, it was kind of a depressive period in my time, you know, life when I moved here because um, I had to um, uh, undergo the surgeries all over again. And this is not just a little root canal. I had to get bone graft and gum graft and, you know, kind of just kind of rework an area of my mouth that was uh, pretty... Um, painful. And now I'm, you know, I'm still in the process of, of finishing this up, but I'm working with probably one of the best um, oral surgeons in, in the world. Um, and he kind of just fixes all kinds of these botched surgeries. So yeah, I was going through that and I, I couldn't really go anywhere because I had to heal from the surgery. So that's probably another reason why um, I didn't like, you know, go full out with the acting because, of course, it's my mouth. I had to heal. And so uh, that was when I decided, you know what, I was introduced to um, different teachings and, and, you know, just kind of, I, I just wanted to go within. So, you know, I, I started looking within and working with some of the teachers that I have that I consider to be phenomenal. And uh, that's where it began. I was just forced to do that. And, and maybe it was a blessing in disguise right. because that, that is what propelled me to 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 dig much deeper than I would have had that not happened. Yeah, sometimes a painful situation uh, forces you to make changes that ultimately come better for you. Tell us about the videos. Now, that's part of. Um, yes. Um, a, a, is it a web series that you do? You know, I just decided one day that I wanted to talk in front of a camera and share my perspective, and that's how it was born. I initially was going to call myself the spiritual whistleblower, but like I said a few <laughs> seconds ago, well, minutes, uh, I <laughs> didn't want to sound like an angry conspiracy theorist because I was so angry at all the spiritual charlatans, but it's, it's just me talking. All episodes are raw and unscripted and straight from the heart, and I share, you know, uh, excerpts from some of my favorite authors, and I kind of elaborate with my own perspective on that, or some of the, the, the awesome healers I've worked with in the past. Um, the upcoming episode is going to, I'm going to be sharing a higher perspective on abortion, which will be another controversial topic. I have some controversial topics every once in a while, like um, the cancer episode is very controversial, but it makes a lot of sense. Um, it's not, you know, neither right or wrong what I share. It's just a higher perspective, and I feel like a lot of people aren't doing this, and it's important um, for us to, to have a higher understanding of everything that is occurring in this world, no matter how tragic it seems, because there is always a higher understanding to everything that happens in our lives and in the world around us. So how often do you produce the Cosmic uh, Videos? I wish I could do them uh, more often, um, but I, I will be going on a trip um, shortly after, uh, well, this week, so probably not till I come back. I would say I try to keep it at once a month, but I'm going to bump that up to at least once every two weeks, maybe every week. I'm trying to maybe do it every Sunday. I haven't decided yet because I have so many topics um, that I want to share and um, I think, yeah, and I, and I love doing it. The most important thing is that I love doing it. Like, I just love sitting in front of the camera and kind of, you know, uh, uh, connecting with, with 
my audience. And it's just, I don't know, it's, it's just something that I love doing. So we, yeah. have, we have a little over a minute here in this segment. I want to ask you about the human struggle, because it's something you reference on your web page yes. and talk about how the steps you have taken in your life to change your life has helped and helps other people uh, handle the human struggle. What are we talking about here? We are talking about constant self-transcendence. And when I say constant self-transcendence, I am referring to peeling the onion. We have to work on our emotional bodies, which is our psychological imbalances, on an everyday basis. So um, that can be as simple as yoga. That can be as simple as uh, emotional freedom technique. That can be meditation or all three, right? So we always have to, it, it's like think about taking out the trash and making your bed every single day. So it's upkeeping spiritual hygiene, but also working on ourselves. And I think that when people do that, um, I, I honestly believe that when we commit to working on our, you know, dissolving the, the many psychological imbalances that all of us carry, um, that we will we'll not only get out of our own way, but I feel that, that things like depression and, um, you know, the, the, the confusion and, and being upset over everything that's going on in the world of politics will begin to dissipate. And that is, a, a, that is what constant self-transcendence is. We have to constantly transcend ourselves and not get comfortable we have to get out of our comfort zones, and we do not like change, so we have to find a way. Chris, I want to ask, uh, go back to talking about magic a little bit. Um, we've talked about, you know, why, what, how, um, mm-hmm. but what types of outcomes does magic and the way you practice it affect? Ah, good question. I'm glad you asked that. Um, well, reversal magic basically is, um, uh, it's, it's like a justice. It's like correcting the injustices of this world. Um, so essentially, like, like, let me, I'll use an example. <laughs> I'm kind of actually going through a, a kind of a, what is a witch, called a witch war right now, um, because there is a, a charlatan that I, I called out, you know, very uh, bluntly. And um, she has a history of, of sending people black magic spells and, you know, but, but for petty reasons like jealousy and whatnot. And um, so I, you know, I, I called her out and I was brave enough to do this. And when I decided to do reversals on her because she was targeting me as well, um, that's when a result of the reversals, kind of what you're doing is you're sending the the person their black magic back right you're pretty much just throwing the trash that they put in your yard back into their yard so you're not cursing them it's not it's not it the punishment fits the crime if that makes any sense so basically you're giving them back what they sent to you so as a result of doing this a lot of her victims uh stepped forward and they were you know thanking me for standing up for them because they were so afraid and she's she's got I get the list is endless but she's let, you know hurt so many Chris, people so Chris, anyway uh, basically you know, what it does hold on let is, me let me understand this just because I want to make sure I, I, I got it and right. everybody understands what you're saying here um, okay. this is actually kind of a, a, a back and forth she was intentionally targeting you for something yes because of jealousy and I and see. many others and um, I started doing reversal magic, and she, long story short, she, she manipulated a magician. How did you know she, 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 was, how did she, know she was How did you know she was doing this to you? What, did, what was happening? Um, you know, I, I felt it. I, I didn't really feel it because she's a weak witch, but she had met, um, um, she, what she does is she manipulates magicians to do her work. So um, she, the way I, I found out is, when I started doing the reversals, her magician left her side and came. To, now he's my friend, and he's a cool guy, and he really knows what he's doing. Um, so it's interesting. I feel like that was one of the you know the side effects of the reversal magic because I didn't reach out to him. Um, so it, it kind of just unraveled all the mess that she has created. Um, but it really didn't affect me. Her, what she was doing to me didn't really affect me, but I found out from other people, and it affected other people. And so I have a friend who I taught how to do reversals, and it, it did affect her because this uh, this girl was uh, targeting her a lot. Now, um, it, so 
essentially what's going on right now is she's getting a huge dose of her karma back, but, you know, she created it. She created it herself. And so I've kind of just been like, uh, not, not really the bodyguard, but the person who's, who's stepping in and saying, look, you've been bullying all of these people this entire time, and it's time that you, you hit a wall because I'm not afraid of her, her, her threats. And so, uh, Long story short, a couple of days ago, she called. She found my mother's phone number, and she called and threatened her and harassed oh, her. Oh wow! How, yeah. how long has this been? Was this? I, I I don't know if you've been able to put an end to it. Sounds like it's still going on. But how long has it been going on? Man, you know, ever since I put out the first video, she's mm. just she's just one of those girls. It's it, it, you know, look, I think everyone can relate to this. We have people that are going to be haters. We have people that are going to be jealous. So I would say a couple of years in my my case. But other people, they haven't been so lucky. I know one woman lost her child as a result of this. This, this girl's lies because she's dangerous because she lies. Her magic mm-hmm. isn't very dangerous, but it's her lies that is so dangerous. And I know how to reverse that too. You can reverse slander, you can reverse hatred, you can reverse lies. So I've devised a spell. It's called the the liar liar pants on fire spell. <laughs> <laughs> and essentially, what you're doing is you kind of just change all the karma, the do restructure you, the karma. Do you also have a nose as long as a telephone wire spell? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> it's funny. But, but yeah, so basically what I've been doing is kind of trying to clean up the mess that this girl has, has this, this score that she has created in this community. And um, she's so determined to, to bring me down, and I'm not worried about her. You know, like I said, she's a weak witch, but she does like to manipulate other magicians to do her dirty work. She plays the victim. So basically what I've been doing is I – what I want to do is empower these people who have been affected. And I think that I have helped quite a few of them. And they have even messaged me privately without wanting to, to say it in public. And they're like, you know, I commend you for what you're doing. Here's my story. And, you know, they shared some of their testimonials of the, how this girl literally destroyed their lives. And it's so heartbreaking. And, you know, this girl's still playing the victim. But anyway, long story short, the reversal magic is so important for every single witch and warlock to, to really understand and be able to execute because there are tons of people who are sending black magic spells because they are jealous or because they want to see you just, you know, suffering. Um, and so we have no control of what they're doing because they also have a right to, to do whatever they want because they have free will. So, but we also have a right to defend ourselves. So reversal magic and uncrossing magic, and I think that's why I was so drawn to that initially, is so important, I think, for every uh, every practitioner to master. You've mentioned past lives a couple times tonight as well. Um, yes. How does that play into all of this, specifically the the magic component, but also just in in the transformation you're making personally? Oh well, I'm not. A, you know, I've never been to Mars. I don't remember any of my past lives. I don't have any of those special powers that a lot of the the healers claim to have. Healers, quote unquote. <laughs> because I've heard some crazy stories. Right. Um, but I think it plays into, into, into my understanding, obviously. You know, I totally believe in reincarnation, and I have people who have shared a couple of my past lives with me. But I think it's important for all of us to realize that it doesn't matter who we were or what we did in previous lives. What matters is that we clear the messes that we have created in those lives so that we can bring forward um, gifts that maybe we, you know, we, we blocked ourselves from, from, um, in, you know, enjoying or being able to, you know, use in those lifetimes out of fear or whatever, um, and bringing them forward. So I'm only concerned with, like, I don't care, because I know all of us have been so many different things, kings and even queens, right, in, in so many of our thousands of lifetimes. So I'm more concerned with clearing out the gunk and, and all the karma that I have created from, from past lifetimes and, and kind of just sifting uh, through all of that in this lifetime. And that is what I'm currently working on um, with the shaman. She goes into the Akashic Records and she clears a bunch of crap. And I know that, you know, I haven't been the, the, the best person in all of my lives, but it's, it's very um, enlightening when I hear some of these stories and, and I, I want to know the truth so that I can correct those imbalances that I right, as my soul has, has chosen um, to, to 
to, I guess, the mistakes that I've made in previous lives. But that's that's my understanding of it. And uh, again, I don't I don't remember any of my past lives. I think that there are definitely uh, certain characteristics um, that I have brought forth. And I think, um, you know, I, yeah, yeah. So that's just pretty much it with me with the past lives. I don't, I don't go beyond that. Yeah, yeah. I noticed on um, your website, there's a lot of stuff on there and a lot of great information about how you've you know chosen and, and worked your uh, your life's path. But one thing I noticed, and I'm not sure if it's intentional or not, but I don't see the word witch there at all. And I'm not even sure I saw the word magic. Is this some, yeah. something that you're defining uh recently or is there is there another reason that it's not on the no, website i just you know i just didn't put it like you know even my new website cleopatra's temple of love and you know one of the packages i have is, is divine love reversal so i'm kind of just adding my own style to it i don't you know i don't even wear a pentagram i don't walk around with a pentagram i don't wear black lipstick um i don't know i mean i feel like all of us are are witches in our own right um so i don't I don't. I just don't label it that way. I don't have magic. I know I didn't even mention it. I think because um, at the end of the day, for me, magic is just a, another healing modality. And I didn't, maybe I, maybe I'll. I'm definitely going to talk about it. Obviously, in the, on the new website, but I feel it boils down to more about empowering our own mind, and um, that's why I probably didn't. You know. Do you say, Do you believe in the concept of a coven? Do you belong to a coven, or is that Something no, that is more optional, I, depending on you know how you would practice. Uh, I mean, witchcraft. I'm not saying I never will be part of a coven. Um, I don't right now. Um, I've kind of just um, developed my own, you know, sanctuary here in my home <laughs> with my girls, my Egyptian goddesses, and my other gods that I work with. Um, so I, you know, I'm not saying I won't be. I'm kind of just a solitary witch at the moment, and I enjoy that because. <laughs> I just like I I feel like you know every time I'm in my living room and I I execute my spells it's like I feel like I'm on the stage you know in New York and I'm just <laughs> you you mentioned <laughs> that <a> <laughs> you mentioned accurately that there are a lot more pe- there are many more people that talk about this and um and I think Jay even Wicca is like one of the fastest yeah, it's one if one of not the fastest, fastest growing religions especially in uh, well teenage teenage and young young Among teenagers women, correct yeah. so yeah. um. If, if if that's the case, and someone who's been listening to this discussion and you know checks out your website or whatever is interested in pursuing a similar path, what kind of advice would you give them? How would you help them start? Okay, and the first, the most important advice that anyone can give them is work on you. Really, really work on um, clearing your emo- your mind. Right, and I would say start with meditation. More importantly, more than anything, because as soon as we light those candles, there is a red flag that goes on up in the astral. And if they haven't gotten done some preliminary ground work, they can attract some of those demonic beings that can trick them. So prepare yourself mentally first. Excuse me. So prepare yourself mentally, mentally first. Absolutely. Now I would say. Definitely uh, apply some type of meditation um, practice or or some kind of just some spiritual practice that they resonate with. It doesn't necessarily have to be meditation, although that's not a bad choice. Um, And really clear their space. I would say if you want to start lighting those candles and executing those spells, make sure you are not drinking alcohol. Make sure you are not doing drugs. I'm not saying you have to be celibate, right, but make sure you're not promiscuous either i would i mean in my honest opinion it's probably not a good idea because you're going to pick up a bunch of entities um but just really having that that clean slate and then really starting out and i feel that you know in my experience because i have done the preliminary groundwork with working on myself and i will continue to work on myself but um working with the different healers and in clearing different layers i feel that that has allowed me to execute the spells the way I do. I feel like that has allowed my inner light to ignite much stronger had I not, you know, done it. Like if I would have practiced magic five years ago, it probably wouldn't have been the same as I'm doing it now. What's next for you? 
Well, I have some plans that I don't want to really share because I'm like, <laughs> you know, trying to manifest it. But, but um, it's a it's a good thing. I'm into astrology too, so I'm looking into moving to a more favorable line. It's astral cartography and cyclo cartography. Um, but that the website is kind of what's next for me right now. That's kind of what I'm working on so that I can sell um, the uncrossing packages and, and reversal packages. And I actually may take, may take on some clients, a few clients per month. I don't really want to do, you know, be like the, the next spellcaster because I want people to learn their own magic and, and, and empower themselves through doing their own magic in the privacy of their own home. All right. Well, one, ahead, f- yeah, just, I'm sorry, one final question, because uh, I think this, this, the answer to this might sum up our, our whole conversation. Uh, how would you describe your the differences in yourself from before you started all this to now? Ooh, the difference is fire, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm on fire. You have no idea. I just feel so cool, calm, and collected and uh, empowered, definitely empowered. And I know there's still more work to be done, but I feel that I am in a place right now in my life where I feel so confident and more grounded than I ever have. And I think a lot of women and men can relate to that in terms of wanting to feel that, especially in, in today's world where everything is so chaotic and there is so much depression around us, right? And there's so much negativity and, and the astral is heavily polluted. So it's important to really, 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 really um, 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 it just want to peel that onion. And, oh, I, I should mention this before. Um, on my website, they can go on the bio section. Um, one of my teachers, Glenn Russell, who I consider to be the ultimate of the ultimate healers, um, he uh, shared, I, I'm sharing his PDF meditation workbook. It's a two-year course, absolutely free, and anyone can go to my website and download the PDF copy for free. It is a very easy uh, meditation um, course to follow and that is one thing that the first thing that maybe you know people who want to practice um, magic should actually start working on and they can actually you know do the magic and do that at the same time but that is so empowering it works it just requires discipline well thanks so much carissa for coming hanging out with us tonight and we look forward to talking to you again at some point in the future Thank you guys so much. It was great, and I love you guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Have a great night. Okay. All right. Thank you to Carissa Renteria for being on the program tonight. You can check her uh, workout at Carissa. That's with two R's and two S's. Renteria. dot com. The only other Renteria I know is he was a baseball player. Who was? What was Edgar Renteria? Was a? I think he was on the um, on the uh, Saint the Cardinals. I think. No idea. You know a lot more about that than I yeah, do. Yeah, I think that's what he was. Make sure know. you tune in tomorrow. We got Lisa Campion on, a psychic and energy healer. We're going to be talking about energy vampires and pretty much how you can protect yourself when dealing with them, how you can spot them, and, and so much more. If you haven't yet, head up to head over to Facebook.com slash Beyond Reality Radio and like that Facebook page for us. Then head to BeyondRealityRadio.com, find all our stations we are on across the country, download the smartphone apps, Listen online right from there and much more. If you download the show from iTunes or anywhere else, take two seconds and rate it for us. Helps push it forward and makes it easier for people to find. That's what it's all about. And everybody, please stay safe out there with this weather. It's extremely cold in uh, most of the U.S. And, well, just think, you know, stay safe out there, and that's all we ask. All right, that's going to do it for us. You're listening to Jason and JV, Beyond Reality Radio. Catch you all tomorrow. Beyond Reality Paranormal is hosted by J.V. Johnson and produced by Orion Palmer and Slick Eddie Edwards. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please consider supporting the program either through your podcast platform, click on the link in the description, or on Patreon at Joha Productions. If you'd like to be a guest on Beyond Reality Paranormal or you have a recommendation for a guest, contact our producer, Slick Eddie Edwards. Eddie is spelled with a Y at slickeddieedwards at gmail.com.